Well, hello everyone. This is Rick Pasek, Fly Fish Fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we're going to tie a steelhead salmon pattern. It's a spay fly. Um, I can actually call it my spay blob or my blob spay, whatever you want to call it. Because it's kind of a hybrid of a, of a trout blob and a spay fly. So um, actually I was, uh, I came up with playing with this one uh, over the last uh, month or so. I haven't tried fishing it yet, so I, I'm damn confident that it's going to work. Uh, but I actually started uh, thinking about this one for uh, uh, a fellow I know, Pat, Pat Deemster, uh, Patches. Um, so I'm going to actually be tying a bunch of these up and sending them out to him um, for him to try for big uh, rainbows and big sea runs and sea run cutties and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, here we go. So in the vise today, we have this hook. I don't know which one it is. It uh, actually was in a bag of uh, a bunch of hooks that I got, but it's, it's a... Um, a space style partridge I'm not even sure what what number but anything like this I really like the gold for this um, especially for um, let's just show you guys what we're gonna be tying very similar to this one um, so the gold looks really cool with the uh, with the um, orange um, I've tied this also in a I've tied it also in a chartreuse and I've tied it in a pink Right, um, but the one we're going to tie today is kind of a black and blue. So, alrighty. So we're going to start off with some Semperfly Nano Silk. Um, this is 18 aught. Uh, normally I would use 12. Uh, it's just what I have on my uh, bobbin at the moment. So that's what I'm just going to use. It works just fine for this. Um, so I'm just going to bring this back about halfway to the tip of the hook from the eye. Okay, and then I'm going to take some of the Flybox UV Gel Core Fritz in black. And I'm going to add that in. I don't want a lot of turns of this. I just want to create a bit of a blob. So right about there. Come back. And I just want to make sure that I'm just kind of a untwist it so it's straight and all my fibers face back okay so one tight up against the other stroking your material back each time and it depends on how much how big of a blob you want here um, I again like I said this is a bit of an experiment um, but I, I, I have all the confidence that this these will work um, just because of some of the ingredients and the movement and the shine and sparkle and attraction and just it just it clicks all the buttons right checks all the check boxes for what i think will work for salmon and steelhead so here's my little blob okay now what i like taking is some black foxtail and i put it into a uh, material clip i don't take it's not very much right and i will just Make myself a bit of a dubbing loop. Wax my loop. Take my dubbing spinner. Put my spinner in. Put my uh, box into it. Spread it out just a little bit more. I had it spread out a bit, but just a bit more. I got it, giving it a good pinch. Spinning my bobbin, letting it take it up. And then I like taking my brush and just making sure that they're not getting trapped. So there. Okay. Now right up against that blob. Every time I go around. Now you could use a blue, dyed blue foxtail here. It would actually work pretty cool actually. And I'm just going around making sure that these are always facing back every time. Okay, and just tie that off, tie that off, and then I'm going to just brush that out a little bit. Like I said, it's not, it's basically it's just to help flare the next section a little bit more than what the, uh, what the blob 
would do. It's all it is, and just adds a little tiny bit more movement. So now what I'm going to use is some. It's just some black pheasant. It's locally harvested here in Alberta. I'm just going to use one feather. Strip off all this under fluff. I don't want any of that. Okay, and then I'm going to tie this in by the tip. So I'm just going to separate these fibers out so I can expose the tip. Stroke it all back. Show you guys in a second once I've got it where I want it. So just got a tie in point shiny side out towards me and I like tying that in and then folding it back and tying back over top of it and then I can nip that out okay and then just make sure that I, get, I like putting the putting a bit of a pinch on this just to get it to face the right way and then around we go right up against that blob Trying not to trap any of those fibers. I mean, I'll, I'll be brushing it out after, but if you can do that now, it just makes it a little bit better. Again, one more. I think I'll be able to get it right there. Just tie it off. And again, just making sure everything's tied down nice. It's a nice thing about this 18 knot, it's so thin that it's not building up any bulk, right? So just stroke that out. So that's gonna really flow down nice. And now I'm gonna get a um, large dot blue guinea fowl feather. Again, same, same technique as the last feather, just gonna strip off all the under fluff down here. I actually like leaving a tiny bit at the end, just as a grip point, but not necessary. And again, same thing, just expose my tip here. Tie it in with the color facing out. Nip that off. And same procedure as the last one. Tried to again give these a pinch a fold just to help them face the right way. I want these train training back, right? So as best as I can at least. And I want about four turns of this, depending on the feather. I mean, sometimes I might want five, sometimes I might only want three. Depends on the feather. So I think that's about it. So I'm just going to peel off some of this extra here. Just come up, walk that in. Before I do anything, I'm going to give it a brush. See how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, nice, nice disbursement of color. That's what I want. So now I'm just going to turn that off a bit better. <clears throat> Stroke that all back and I'm going to come up and over top of that guinea fowl feather just a little bit, build up a nice little head here. It doesn't have to be huge. And then I'm just going to do a 6-8 turn whip finish there. Cut that off take my UV resin in this case it's Gulf Thinman I'm just gonna put just a, a dab on this don't want a lot and then hit this with a light Almost done. Just let that make sure that's cured really, really well, which it is. And then I'm just gonna 
I like brushing these out backwards just in case there's anything that's trapped. And that's with any of these types of spays, right? I like doing that. And there's our finished product. Like I said, I tie them in several different color schemes. I think it depends on the, the water situation and the color and clarity and sky and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, these will be uh, these will be heading over to Pat Deemster and see if uh, if he can uh, catch anything when he's guiding for uh, you know for his for his clients with these. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Like I said, it's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of an experiment, but it, it's 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 definitely something I know will work uh, just because of the components in it and the color and the movement and size and and stuff. So I know they will work, but uh, I just haven't uh, haven't tested them yet. So, but hope you guys enjoyed that. If you've subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. If uh, if you uh, don't mind, spread the word to your friends and everybody. And uh, yeah, let's get this uh, let's get this going. I'm almost 2,500 uh, subscribers now, so let's keep her going. 3,000, I'll do another giveaway. 2,500, I'm going to do a small one. Um, I actually, uh, I, in the next video, I'm going to do a little Czech nymph, and I'm going to give away a copy of Czech Nymphing 101, courtesy of Gary Hankey at Fly Life Canada. So I'm going to give a copy of that away um, with the uh, Czech nymph uh, video that I'll be doing in a little bit. So. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Bye.